We're now going back through the entire alimentary canal in more detail. I'm not going to go through all of the structural pieces of the oral cavity. Um, I'll just point out some key ones. You've seen this sagittal section of a half head before, um, mid sagittal, half of a head. Um, this here, this cavity, this opening, this is the oral cavity. This is where food goes. I think you know this. Air also passes through it. Um, we're going to be looking at food now. Um, you know that air can go either into the nasal cavity or the oral cavity, and then it goes in a different tube. So here is the trachea. Posterior to the trachea is the esophagus. The esophagus and trachea are not part of the oral cavity. We'll label the larynx in the next slide because that's not part of the oral cavity either. Oral cavity is this hole here. A lot of it's taken up by this massive muscle, which is the tongue. Um, so the actual cavity that's left is really not that big. Um, so it's the start of where food comes in. It's ingested, I'm outlining the cavity here. It's then going to enter the larynx after it is mechanically digested by your teeth. So oral cavity is for ingestion, mechanical breakdown, a little bit of ke chemical breakdown via an amylase enzyme. We're going to have mastication with our teeth and mixing with saliva, and then we'll have the initiation of swallowing. So take an apple, you bite and chew it um, and swallow. It becomes a bolus that is swallowed. In the mouth, it's still going to be like that's the only place in digestive that's still food. Um, so ingestion of food. And mechanical breakdown is the, the biggest other thing. From this view here, there's a ton of anatomy that I'm not going to go into. Some of this that you've seen before, I'm just going to reference for you. So hard palate, that's what we saw in lab. We saw a cut of it where you could see the stratified squamous epithelium and the pseudostratified that's on the other side, that nasal cavity here is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Um, and actually, I realized that is part of the hard palate there, but that's um, also something else. Let's just do both of these. This whole thing is the hard palate. Soft palate is behind that. That's where there's no longer that bone right here. Soft palate back here, hard palate. The back of the soft palate, there is what's called the uvula. That is your little hangy thing um, hanging down. You can see some tonsils here. They're also here and here, same thing. Tonsils have some immune function. Um, it's not largely understood because you can have them removed and you do okay. Um, what else? Teeth, right? That's what I really want to emphasize here. That's for that mechanical breakdown. You got a bunch of teeth different shapes and sizes have different names for different purposes, grinding versus incising, like chomping versus um, slicing and slashing. We're omnivores, we can do all those things. It's pretty cool. And just like, well, one more thing here. Um, this is the gingiva, so gingivitis, right, is inflamed gums. That's your gums. Okay, so what I really want you to get from this is the function of the oral cavity. Ingestion of food, mechanically break it down, and then we are gonna have it mixed with saliva so it can be swallowed, and it's actually gonna to start to be chemically digested a bit at that point. So what I wanna emphasize with that is the salivary glands. That's, these are glands that produce saliva. Hopefully that's obvious. And so saliva, um, so let me go back to the glands. The glands are exocrine glands because we're secreting fluid from inside of the body out. Our digestive system is outside of our body. So it's that simple cuboidal or um, columnar epithelium that make up ducts. And these are 
exocrine glands. Released into ducts, you can see the little green things here. These are the ducts, ducts that are going to carry saliva from the gland where the saliva is produced into the mouth so that it can mix with the food. Saliva, um, one more thing first. There are, so the three pairs of glands, I'll label them. Um, you probably know I'm not gonna test you on these. There's the parotid glands, a pair of them, right? One at each side. There's submandibular glands underneath the mandible bone. And then there's sublingual underneath the tongue. You could see in the slide previous, that frontal view, okay? It had a little, um, the ducts coming out, you can actually feel. Actually, you can feel the ones over here, your uh, ferroted glands. You can feel the ducts. A little bump back there, if you go back to right at the back molar. You can feel where the little duck comes out and squirts into the mouth. Exocrine glands produce saliva. Saliva, this is what is important. It's gonna contain electrolytes, mucus, water. These things are gonna lubricate and soften the food so it becomes a bolus. Um, immune molecules, we actually start fighting um, potentially pathogens here. Um, and then salivary amylase is the name for the digestive enzyme that breaks down starches. This is gonna break down polysaccharides into disaccharides to start that um, breakdown. It's actually bake, breaking bonds, right? That's what enzymes do. They're taking separate bonds and cleaving them in half. That's different than mechanically breaking things down. So when you go to get your COVID test and you um, are trying to get your spit sample, what should you think about to help that sampling go quicker? Any ideas? Well, I'll tell you, every time I go, I think of chocolate cake. Um, that's, let me draw a piece of chocolate cake. It's not gonna be beautiful. There's my piece of chocolate cake. And I think about it and it, it um, oh, look at that, that's not bad. It helps me salivate more, more easily. Like I notice it, it's, it's great. Why is that? What is that triggering? Parasympathetic nervous system is being triggered by me thinking about chocolate cake. Um, I also can try to be calm, take, take deep breaths, start that parasympathetic nervous system. If you're stressed out and late for class, you're gonna take longer to collect saliva. The parasympathetic nervous system is going to trigger saliva production and release from the salivary glands. Pretty cool. 